Welcome to tutorial 3 in my Ultimate Rust tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at three topics. The first is we're going to look at game settings. I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but it's kind of kind of relevant. You should make a few tweaks and understand the keys. Second of all, we're going to look at choosing where to live. And third of all, we're going to look at gumping, which is how you get from your spawn beach. I'm on a rather pretty spawn beach all the way to having a base at least ready to set up. So let's go through settings first of all, and then crack on with other stuff. Chapter 1 Settings Before you do anything fancy like actually play the game, <laughs> let's whiz through the game settings and ensure everything is working properly. Hit escape and go to the gear icon. In the game settings there are a few things you should think about straight away. The first is do you want to mess with your field of view? There are actually ways you can crank this up even higher than the recommended or the setting it gives you. I'm just going to leave it about that. You can go Google for binds and commands and console commands to mess with that. The compass at the top of the screen you can turn on or off or put on a toggle. Use interface scale. For me on my big monitor the scale is a little small so I like to drop it down a little bit. 0.8 seems about right. I'm going to leave the HUD on. I'm actually going to turn chat off just because uh, I want this to be a family friendly video and YouTube uh, probably won't appreciate some of the chat that will, will otherwise appear. Branding I'm going to turn off, which is commonly a banner you can find on the top of your screen. Haven't seen it recently, but I'm just going to turn it off. Name tags I'm going to leave on. Tips you'll probably have on, I'm turning them off. They're not that useful. Maybe leave them on if you're new. You might have uncensored or pixelated set as how you see other players. I'm going to be putting them on underwear again because YouTube doesn't like seeing naked uh, 3D models. Yeah, that's great. Hide signs is to turn off other people's content because their signs can be rude. I'm going to leave that off just because I think it's going to be fine as is. The next thing to fiddle with is audio. Now, the music is on right now, but I'm actually going to turn it right off because there's a couple of reasons for it. The first is that the music will prevent you from hearing the little footsteps of those little sneaks trying to smack the back of your head in with a rock. And the second reason is it's really creepy. It's good music, but it's creepy and it makes me super tense. So I'm just going to, yeah, both of them can just go away before I cry. I'm going to turn the was it the, the game sound volume down a little bit and just leave the voice volume up a little bit higher that way people talking will stand out very clearly that may be a good or a bad thing depending on your luck the next thing i want to look at here is graphics you can fiddle with all this yourself i've cranked quite a lot of details up I'll put that one back on just because i have a whoa I'll do all of those things wow all of them are on. Uh, I have quite a decent computer, so that seems like a reasonable thing to do. Input. This is where you can mess around with binds if you want. Just the key controls should be pretty obvious stuff here. But I'm going to talk you through some of this uh, as well in the course of playing the game. So with all of that set how you like it, press escape. One thing I am going to suggest you do straight away is press F1, which will bring you up to the console. There are other bits and bobs in here. None of these will work for you right now. You can't go creating items unless you're on a creative server typically. But under console you can type a bind command. So I'm going to type bind z forward colon sprint. And it's going to be very helpful to get around and then I just hit escape. I am now ready to actually play the game. I'm just kidding. We're going to look at the HUD first. So first of all, yay look we're in. Woohoo this is rust. Wow. Let's talk about what we can see. Okay, top of the screen, there is a there is a compass bar. And as you can see, as I turn around, the compass turns, as you would expect. Bottom right, there is a health bar, a uh, food hunger bar, and a, and a hydration bar. You want all of those things to be high. If your hydration or your food bar gets too low, the game will tell you that you're starving or you're dehydrated and you'll start losing health. You'll also see status effects over that bar. Things like too cold or too hot or comfort if you're standing next to a fire that kind of stuff the chat window will be on the left hand side you can hit enter to type and talk to everyone i have got that turned off for the reasons i've stated earlier and the item bar in the bottom is allows, allows you to choose different items based on one two three four five six 
as you'd expect, holding down Wazard will drive you around just like in any FPS, holding down Shift will let you run, but we also have our wonderful Z key, so I've just pressed Z and now I can just run endlessly without tiring up my little finger holding down Shift. As soon as I tap W or S again, then the Z key's off, so tap and I stop. Yeah, very simple. Great for traveling long distances. If you want to jump, spacebar makes you jump. If you want to crouch, hold down control and you crouch. When you're running, if you hit spacebar and jump, you'll get a little bit extra height if you jump a bit distant from something. So if you run right up to a cliff face and hit jump, you'll get some distance. But if you're back a little bit and hit jump, you'll get a little bit more height. So just bear that in mind. And you can jump crouch. I'm not very good at it, but it is possible and that's how people get through windows which don't have bars or shutters on them. It's important to note that as you run around you'll make noise and that noise does depend on the surface you're on. So on sand with bare feet and water, on grass I'm going to sound different. Same if I'm on stone or if I'm on metal or, or other kinds of you know, building tiles and so on. Also depending on the, the footwear you're wearing the sound will change. Smart players will hear you creep up on them or run up to them. If you crawl you can generally get up to people without too much noticing going on unless you sort of do something foolish like run or jump or mess around with your inventory. Other useful keys to know are tab which will open your inventory and where you can drag and drop things from your quick bar or onto your character. Also where quick craft items will come up depending on what's in your inventory and tab will remove that. And finally, our Q key will bring up the full build interface or with all the things that it is possible to craft. And uh, even if you don't have the resources for them, you can see them here, how long they're gonna to take to craft and other information about them, how much protection something gives you. Uh, you can see weapons here, what kind of damage they do, what their impact on gathering is, that kind of stuff. So when you're looking at this information, you can see the damage an item does. You can see that ore gather is going to gather uh, four ore if you whack a rock with the club. However, about a bunch of other ore gets destroyed when you gather that four. So that's not a great tool for that. If I go across to tools, you can see that a pickaxe is much better for ore gather and wastes less of the resources. Likewise, an axe is good for gathering trees, less, less for gathering flesh. That's important to remember and you really want to be using the right tools for the job which is something we'll discuss a bit later on. Chapter 2, Where to Live So now you've had a look at settings, it's time to talk about where you're going to live. And so the first thing to do is to hit G and to look at the map and to find where you are. So I'm over here. So on this map, temperate zones across the middle here, snow to the south and desert to the north. And I, I have to think of a few things where resources are going to spawn. So for example, cloth is all going to be in the grass, I will need cloth. Uh, we're going to have, well, I don't know, maybe useful stuff around the edge of cliffs. I can see there's some here. Rocks like to spawn there, we, we will want rocks. Trees will spawn mostly, well, majorly in the temperate area, obviously less so in the desert. Uh, I am kind of keen on being close to the water. The water is a very good place for newbies to live next to. And I need to think about the sites. So I'm looking at sites and I'm not too fan of this end of the map. There's nothing really exciting down here. Quarry and a gas station. That's the only useful stuff. Oh, the sewer branch here. If I was good at the parkour puzzle on sewer branch, that might be tempting because it's probably a bit quiet down this end of the map. I have chosen a very, very quiet server to make things a little easier. And I encourage you to do the same, at least for your very first game, if you're playing solo. Uh, up this end of the map is more interesting. There's a river here, which is always good news. The launch site is here, which is a very popular location. The dome is here, and the dome is much easier to run than launch site. And so I'm kind of wondering if this would be good around here, because I'm hoping people will be mostly distracted by launch site. Maybe dome and harbor would be left alone. The harbor's not amazing, but it's not terrible. So I'm thinking I'm going to run over here and try and set up along the beach here. And to do that, I need to figure out which direction it is. So it's kind of, it's kind of east-ish. That's fine. So what's important about this is that we've decided where we're going to go. And now we have to think about our route. So I'm going to try and I could probably run through this outpost. I'm not going to have any weapons while I'm in there. I'll be protected by the guns. So going through this way is not a bad idea. I might go close to dome. 
it is a little dangerous. Uh, these roads might be a good spot. I might run through harbour, actually. Might be fairly quiet. I might get some loot. Chapter 3, Gumping. So we've chosen where to live, and now we need to think a little bit about how we're going to get there, how we're going to get our base set up, and what we're going to do. So there's kind of three viable strategies to going from Spawn Beach to having a base. So the first strategy, which as a new player you are least likely to pull off, is the snowball. And that is where you just basically murder people. You find some rookie player who's, you know, harvesting resources or running around getting ready to build a base. You murder them and steal all their stuff. That's perfectly viable. Plenty of people get bases started that way or gather the gear to snowball onto killing uh, more equipped players and that gets them more stuff. That's uh, not what we're gonna do today. The second strategy is to do what I call building and running. And that would involve harvesting resources to make the basic tools, gathering a whole bunch of resources, sort of quite close to Spawn Beach, and then running to the location and setting up your base. To me, this is prone to failure because this time standing around, you know, if I'm standing around here, and I'm whacking trees and, you know, I'm, I'm bashing on rocks over here with my rock and taking a little while because I'm not getting many resources when I do this. I'm, I'm basically a, a really good target for someone who wants to snowball, right? So I don't prefer to do that. What I prefer to do is the third way. So I call that gumping uh, because Pepper the Red, who's a YouTuber whose content I quite like, uh, he used to do a lot of YouTube. That was his preferred strategy. And what it involves uh, is running across the map and... Uh, Pepper the Red describes it as basically running, picking up everything you can as you go. And when you get to a location where you want to stop, that's when you start worrying about gathering resources uh, that you don't have already. And the advantage of this strategy is you're always moving. And that means that people are generally not going to bother chasing you. You're hard to shoot because you're pretty much, as I said, always moving. And you're not looking like you're geared up with stuff. You don't carry any tools you're not running across the map all tooled up and that means that even even more uh, chance of you hopefully evading detection or interest because there are other juicier targets out there for the for the combat hungry people to grab while you're running to your destination you're keeping an eye out for useful resources so here's one it's a pile of wood and it looks pretty much like this uh, everywhere you go it might be a slight texture change in snow or desert can't remember actually should pay more attention to things and as I run around I'm just going to be gathering up stuff like that another type of resource I will find is just little stone spawns like this sulfur spawns like this and metal ore spawns like this other kinds of resources that spawn in the wild include cloth or hemp which uh, produces cloth for you and food boxes which you'll find generally near monuments or on junk piles. So here's a food box. And if I right click on stuff, I pick it up. So here I've got a can of beans, I've got a chocolate bar, and I've got some rad pills. These I would only consume if I had radiation, which you would see as a ticking sound there. I want to generally eat all the food I can. And as you can see, my health has gone up a little bit. My food uh, bar has gone up, which is a good sign as well, because that shows me that I'm going to be healthier, heal a little, that kind of stuff. There's no point in storing that stuff prior to getting anywhere. As you travel, you're likely to come across junk sites and you'll find them under these power lines, for example, and you'll find them along roads and around monuments. The only thing you really want to worry about are the boxes and things that you can open quickly. So that was a little red toolbox. I'm just going to ignore pretty much everything else at this stage. Free stuff to pick up. Here is another crate. I like these as well. And all this stuff will worry about what it is later, but for now, you're just gonna grab it and run. In these boxes, you might find tools. You might find a bow or some other kind of weapon if you're very lucky. That's great. The weapons will end up in your hotbar and you can select them with the right numbers and everything else will end up in your inventory. You want to be a little bit careful getting close to some monuments like, whoa, this one here. Oh, ow, 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 that's radiation. You can hear it really dosed me up there for a little bit. It does, or these monuments, sometimes, some of them will have little boxes in them. And if you have red pills on you, then yeah, you could take a little a little run, 
see if you can spot the boxes. No, and then I've got my red pills on me and I can hit them and get rid of my radiation poisoning a little bit. While running to your destination, you may come across uh, little monuments like this abandoned outpost or the abandoned cabins. It is not a bad idea to run in here and just grab these boxes worth of stuff. There can be good things. Oh look, I got a meat cleaver. So now I am armed. I've got this, this salvage cleaver. Because I've taken a weapon on, my dude, my dude now has a sash. And I can stab anyone who gets in my face. And so yeah, will you will find uh, inevitably some weapons or tools as you as you go about your gumping. Hopefully no one's here. The more popular the monuments, the more likely you to meet someone. But if you keep running and keep being quick, should be alright. I've come close to the train yards monument here, not enough to get radiation, but close enough to find things like these bottles. So having a, a bottle is handy because I can press three and then I can tap my uh, tap my button, tap my mouse button and, and have a little drink. If I ran past a river, I could obviously, I could stand in the river and look down. But for now, I'm just gonna grab this stuff. Empty bottles, I'm gonna throw away and I'm just going to put all the food here and uh, munch it as I travel. If I got up to full health, I would probably just leave the food there and if anyone started shooting at me and hurt me, I would munch it because it might give me a little bit of health back, maybe enough to keep me alive. Well, the good news is I've made it through to the desert without being attacked or molested and I've got a good pile of resources, so let's talk about what I've got here. Wood and stone are my priorities. Sulfur is a nice to have a store of. I guess it's nice to have. Less useful at the start of the game, more useful later on. However, I am uh, very happy to have some, I guess. If I had to dump something, it probably would be that. I've got these tin cans. I'm actually going to keep them. I've got these component things for the electrical system. I don't really need them. I would probably want to get rid of them. I've got other bits and bobs, but my goal right now is to keep running I'm also looking out for things like caves. As you would have seen in the previous video, caves can offer boxes with tools and other goods in them. So if I did have a cave that was very handy, I would probably take a little peek into it to see if I could pick up some free tools or other stuff, because that's all stuff I might not have to make later on. What I do want to make straight away is a sleeping bag. So hitting tab to pull up my inventory menu, sleeping bag is immediately selected because I have enough cloth so I can just whack this and 30 cloth is consumed and the sleeping bag is now being crafted. If I click the wrong thing, I can I can click my crafting button, which might, might be Q for you. And I can see under the crafting, the current thing's been crafted and I can click that to cancel it. And then the resources appear back in my inventory. So this way I have it crafting up and I'm gonna keep running while I craft. I don't need to stop. And I'm gonna gather whatever I can as I go not pausing an instant, except of course if I spot one of the scientists, one of the blue NPCs wandering around. I gotta be careful, they will be very aggressive, they can shoot me very easily, and that would be bad for my face. So my sleeping bag is crafted, I've grabbed more food, and I'm very close to Dome. On any kind of busy server this would probably be slightly suicidal. Dome is super popular because of the loot spawns on it, and I'm nowhere near equipped to deal with anyone who might want to, to keep me away from their loot. But I have managed to grab a whole bunch of stuff because this is a very quiet server. And it's kind of useful stuff, I guess. So we're going to keep running. I'm running this way to the coast. I have got my sleeping bag and I've put it in my slot there, slot 3. And I can pull it out at any time and I can see where I can place it. Because I'm near to the monument, I can't place the sleeping bag down. If I was near to someone's base... I would get a building blocked message or something similar and I wouldn't be able to place the place of sleeping bag down there either. So for now I'm just going to run and, and find a spot. I'm sure it'll open up soon and let me put it down. And when it does I'm going to be able to give myself a new respawn location which will be very handy. Here we go. Okay if I leave it in the middle of the road here anyone passing by can see it. They can attack it with their weapons or their swords or what have you and get rid of it. So I want to be a little bit sneaky. Maybe I'll try and put it behind some rocks where people aren't likely to come. Or in a bush like... Like... Oh, there is actually already a sleeping bag in here. Yes, there is. It's another one similar to mine. So I'm going to put mine in here. They'll get confused, hopefully. And if I look at it, I can hold down E and I get different options. I can, As long as I'm holding down E, I can pick it up. I can give it to some friend on Steam. Just start typing in their name. 
like I don't know, I don't know, moose, sure, or I can uh, rename it. And so I'm going to call this one Dome, which is now when I die or if I die, I know I'm going to appear in this location if I choose that sleeping bag. You can put down multiple sleeping bags across the map and that way you have lots of options where to spawn. Obviously, the best place is probably in your base and near your base. Good places to spawn if you die. Oh, I've just come across a very lucky item, which is this revolver. I don't have any bullets for it, but I'm going to throw away my rock and put my revolver there and keep everything else. Oh, it come, comes with four bullets. Oh, that's brilliant. Problem is I wouldn't have any idea how to use it if I was a new player. So right click aims and then left click shoots. It's loud, perhaps a little dangerous. I'm now close to the outpost. I better put it away. But that would be very handy. And here is another thing that I really want, which is metal tools gonna throw away I've got two pairs of diving goggles we'll throw away one of them and grab that metal tool that's gonna be very handy later on so these are the kind of things you're gonna find when you're gumping and that's very very useful stuff and we'll talk about the kind of range of items you can get in a minute so I have successfully gumped a long way across the map even though this is a relatively small map because I am on a low pop server and I'm hanging around in harbour because I know there's almost no one online. If you were on a, a server with 50 or 60 or 100 people on, there's no way you would just stand around in a monument like this. You may even avoid the roads. I mean, that's a risky thing to do. So let's talk about what we've got and how we're going to make use of the recycler as we go past. Now, there are recyclers scattered around a lot of monuments. They are great. Visiting one while you're gumping is a risk. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll show you why we might want to visit one. So here are the resources I've got stacked up in my inventory and we'll talk about what we do and don't want to keep. So everything around switches and fuses, uh, there's a, a fuse. I'm probably just going to throw these out. But because there's a recycler here, I don't need to throw them out. I can just right click and dump them in there. This sheet metal, I also don't need. So I'm just going to blend that up. Tools, there are other tools out there and I'm going to want to keep them. This wooden wall, I also am going to throw away. Uh, these uh, semi-automatic bodies, I want to keep. Scrap, I want to keep. The tin cans, I will keep for now. If I had to, I would throw them out. These metal window bars are a little bit rare. Not super rare, but they are a little bit. So I'm going to keep them. These I need for weapons. Those bits and bobs. These seeds, I will throw them out if I have to, but I'm not too worried about them. Gears, I'm actually likely... Oh, no, I'm going to keep them. Oh, I think I just broke it. No, I got rid of one of them. I'm going to keep them. I might want one for crossbows if I recall they use them. Tools like this, I'm going to keep the pickaxe and hatchets. Meanwhile, I've got a whole stack of resources out of this. That is a lot of very useful material for a new player to have. Makes me kind of nervous to have this much, actually. Got a whole pile of wood and everything else is looking pretty good. My goal really is to be ready to either gather resources with tools that I've found or to have collected. Oh, I'm going to get rid of those signs too. I won't need those for a while. So I want in here at least a couple of thousand wood, maybe a little bit more. And I want maybe 3000 stone. That's going to be very easy for me to pick up myself uh, just by hammering away at rocks and stuff. But uh, if I can get them running around, great. This much metal fragments right at the start is very good. This high quality metal is nice and this scrap is also wonderful. So yes, on a populated server, I would now be feeling extremely nervous because that's a lot of good stuff. The other things you're likely to find are blueprints. They look like a blue piece of paper. Should be pretty obvious. And you can click on them and click learn. And we'll talk about what those are later on. But for now, I would I would consider just picking them up and learning them. If you encounter animals while running around, for example, well, I'm just gonna grab these delicious rocks. These boars, I would probably avoid them. Avoid all animals. You can probably run past a chicken safely, but everything else you should avoid. If you see a wolf, what is that over there? Is that a boar? It is, okay. If you see a wolf or a bear, run. And they are pretty quick, so they might kill you. But if you can run either through rocks, around rocks, over rocks, you can over cliffs if you don't die. You can throw them off your scent a reasonable amount and you might you might end up losing them among the rocks. 
But yes, if you do face them, don't even try and fight them. Even if you have a nice big meat cleaver like this. So I've made it to where I'm planning to build and I managed to do a little cave run. and got some even more better loot. I am a little concerned that there is a base sort of pretty much where I want to live already. I, I don't understand it. It is very odd. I think someone's having a bit of fun here. This is a quiet server. People like to experiment. I'm going to leave these guys alone, but I am now going to find my special location. So I am a little bit worried I don't have many trees around here. There's a few, but not, not that many. However, there are lots and lots of rock nodes. There's some sulfur nodes here. There's rock and ore everywhere. So that's going to be very handy. It's time to prepare to survive beyond uh, just running around on my own. It's time to prepare to set up a base. And what I need to do is I need to prepare a couple of things. So the first thing I need to do is to make sure I've got a sleeping bag. And the next thing I'm going to do is make a small stash. And I'm going to try and hide away some of these goodies. What I will do, oh, by the way, I've got this little uh, water here. I can drink contents, top myself up. I'm going to eat this, this bar and I'm going to make the sleeping bag. My inventory is now very full. I could go back and scrap these binoculars, but I might just leave them there for now. So I've decided that this little area would be quite nice, relatively close to the beach, which is handy if I want to go out towards the towards the sea and do some raiding. It's quite close to the harbour, which is a friendly newbie-ish area, very close to dome, relatively close to launch site. So for me, on a very quiet server, that seems okay. What I'm going to do now is put down my sleeping bag. So my sleeping bag is going to be stuck again, somewhere sneaky. Here we go. It's looking like I can place it somewhere around here. So I'm going to see if I can place it right there. I'm going to call this near base. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a stash. So a stash is made with a little cloth. And what it does is it allows you to hide some resources away. There goes the sun. Night is coming. And hiding resources away uh, can be a very helpful thing to do early on in the game. It's not, it's not a perfect solution, but it is pretty good. So here's my small stash, and what I'm going to do is put it somewhere near my near my bag. It's going to be a little hard. I might put it on the other side of this rock here, right in that little dent there, somewhere I can remember. What I don't want to do is for anyone to see me doing this. If they watch me hunched over a rock, they're going to figure there's a stash there and come along and steal it. Now I can open it, and I can put stuff in it that I don't want. So I can put in, like, this, this stuff here, and I can put in the scrap. Scrap is very important. The raw metal frags, very important. Um, wooden stone I might keep for myself. Any low grade I have, high quality metal. Maybe these uh, springs. It's a bit difficult to know how exactly, or what exactly to put away. Maybe the semi-automatic bodies. But I can make multiple stashes. And once I've got it all full, I can hold E on it. And it will drop into the ground when I choose the, the hide button. And as you can see, it's not there. Hackers will see it. I haven't, I can't be sure that I've ever lost any stashes to hackers, but I have heard it happens. They, they can use special tricks. And when I, but if I want to find it, I can come back along here, look in this location, and if I'm patient, my stash will come popping back up again and I can access it. But for now, I'm just going to hide it. It's not a bad idea when you have got to your location and you need to start preparing to build a base to uh, stash a few things. If I put them near my sleeping bag, I'll always kind of know where it is. But at the same time, I will always, always keep an eye on the map, maybe even screenshot it or write it down so I can have a better chance of finding this particular rock. It's very easy to miss rocks. And as you would have heard, be careful just casually walking past your stashes. If other people see them, they can come along and steal them. So hold E, mouse over hide and let go and it'll tap the mouse button and you'll be fine. As it stands, we have the tools we need to get on with the next stage, which is to gather the resources to set the base up. And we actually have quite a few of the resources we want already prepared, which is which is great. The tools that we have are a pickaxe for mining out rocks and a hatchet for chopping down wood. It's pretty simple. These are tools that I don't currently know how to make. So if I go to tools list here, it shows you what I know how to make which is a stone pickaxe and a stone hatchet. So if I click on the stone hatchet here, you can see that it gathers uh, 16 and from ore. It can also gather from flesh, but it destroys a little bit of ore when it gathers. Compare that to 
my uh, wonderful, wonderful pickaxe, it gathers 30, doesn't waste any ore or anything when it is uh, hitting the rocks. Likewise, this hatchet here uh, is doing very well when I compare it to the uh, stone hatchet, it's not quite as great. But if you didn't have tools, if you weren't lucky enough to find them, you should have the resources on you to make a stone hatchet and a stone uh, pickaxe. You will need one of each. You might get other kinds of uh, equipment. So let me just show you. Oh, there goes my torch. You might, if you're extremely lucky, get a salvaged axe or a salvaged pickaxe. These are even more amazing. They, they gather very large amounts of trees and, and ore when you whack stuff with them. But that's going to be perhaps a little unlikely. So there are other weapons that you may come across. You may pick up machetes. You may find uh, swords. If you find them, that's great. You'll quite commonly find uh, bows. You will also find them with some arrows. We'll talk about weapons another time. So your job, once you've stashed a bit of stuff and have tools, and if you do need to make them, then you can just click on them from your quick bar, is to gather resources. And so that's a very simple job we'll talk about when the sun comes up. Uh, dawn is here and I've made another stash and I'm going to put it just around the corner from the first one so I don't accidentally whoop, ate, ate me beans, never mind. I'm going to put it around here and I'm just going to load it up with my metal ore because I don't need it right now and I might put uh, 50 ore isn't worth it. I'll put these semi bodies in it as well and all my remaining cloth. Oh, first of all I'm going to keep this for a second. If you do need to heal yourself and you have cloth, you can tap the bandage button here and make yourself three bandages or three, three bandages will stack in a pile. So if I click this another three times, I'll end up with six bandages all up. And then we're going to use one just by selecting it and left clicking. Wow, look at that. I'm, I'm bandaging and I, my health will go up. If someone was in front of me and they were wounded, I could right click and I will bandage them as long as I don't get too far away. So bandages are very handy. I haven't bothered to make clothes and I could make a shirt. I could make, if I come into clothing in the, in the, in the menu, in the tab menu for crafting, I can make trousers, I can make all kinds of things. I'm not doing that when I'm gumping because I want to look like I've literally just stepped off the beach. And if I, I put clothes on, I might attract attention. It won't exactly keep me alive unless I'm going through a frozen area. That's the only time. I'm gonna put that delicious water away and bury that. So now my inventory is a little bit more clear and I can actually start to gather. And what I want is stone and wood. So for the wood, I'm not going to pull out this wonderful pistol. I should have put that away, actually. Definitely should put that away. I don't want to lose that. Just being shot in the back of the head while I'm hitting trees. So I can either use a hatchet or if I had a stone hatchet, I would use that. And I whack a tree. And as you see, I get 15 wood and there's a little red X. If I keep hitting the X, I get more and more resources up to, I think it's 20, oh, a bit higher with this hatchet and then the tree will eventually come down. I don't have to hit it, I can hit elsewhere, but as you see the number goes down and that makes the whole cra the whole crafting, the whole chopping thing slower. And I want to try and be efficient, so I'm trying to grab it a little bit. And as you see I got a little bonus amount of wood at the end and so I've ended up with I think about 750 odd wood from all of that and now I'm up to 2200. Considering I don't need much more than this, one more tree is probably plenty. It's one of the nice things about gumping is that you can get quite a lot of resources if you're, not, if you're careful. And I don't have to make any tools in this case. If you're playing, you might have to go and make tools. You might need a stone hatchet, you might need a, uh, a pickaxe, that's fine. You might not be quite as lucky as I've been on this very quiet server. And if you do, that's okay. It's a little bit more gathering time for you. So that amount of wood is probably plenty for me to get started with a base. I think it should be fine. It's now time to do the next thing, which is to look for a rock to smack. Fortunately for me, right over here is a rock to smack. So there are different kinds. We're gonna look at all of them. This is a stone node. You get used to seeing it, it's this shape. And you whack it by clicking and tapping. And I'm trying to hit the star for the same reason as I would whack the tree on the, on the, on the cross on the tree because I get bonus resources when I do it and the whole rock comes down quicker. It's important to note that using these metal tools gives me more resources than if I was to use the stone tools. And if I had a salvage tool, it would be even better, but I'm making do with this. 
if I lost this tool at this point, I would be a little sad, but it's not necessarily the end of the world. I can always make stone pickaxe, I can make stone hatchet, but I would really very much like to keep them so I can research them. And then with them researched, I can make these tools myself. So this is a metal node. It's kind of a low priority for me at this point, especially because I picked up so many where oh, little bits of metal while I was running. I am mining it merely for the example for you guys to see, but I would not take any time to bother mining this if I was on a busy server and a bit worried about safety. The final rock type that you'll see out and about is a sulfur node. Should be pretty obvious, it's very yellow. Very, very important later on in the game for raiding and what have you. People do value sulfur a lot. For this part of the game, not so relevant. Again, I'm just smacking it so you get an idea of, idea of what it looks like. But as it stands right now, I have got everything I need to start building, building a base. What I need to do now is make a few simple things. I need to make a tool cupboard, it's gonna cost a thousand wood, a wooden door, key lock, and another key lock. And as you can see, they're gonna take a little time to craft. So at this point, I'm probably gonna hide. I might even stash my tools, get another stash prepared in advance, put my tools away. With my seeds, I can plant those now. I'm gonna be living in this area. So I can just put them in my inventory hotbar, click like crazy, and I'm just gonna get rid of all of my seeds. If you run around, you might also find yourself eating corn or pumpkins, as you would have seen in the last video. They produce seeds, you can plant those too. Over a little while, they will uh, pop up, the plants will pop up, you can harvest them. I also need to make two tools. I need to make one hammer and one building plan. The wooden door here in this case is a skinned one I've got. It's got a cool Halloween look on it. That's fine, we'll talk about skins another time. But those items, once they're crafted, you're ready to start building a base. As long as you've got yourself a bit of wood and a bit of stone in your inventory. But we're going to cover base building in the next video because it's quite an involved topic. So I hope you will tune in for the next episode. I'm also going to be hosting a discussion with some people who build bases on where they like to build and what kind of bases they like to build. I hope you'll tune in for those too. They're kind of optional extras. But until next time, I've been Tiny Pirate. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a, a like and uh, a comment. These things do help the channel. And if you're feeling super generous, then I don't know, be a member or go and make me your favorite creator on the Epic Store. Any of those things would be brilliant. Otherwise, just say hi. Thanks for watching. Good night.